This episode of the Talent Talks podcast was recorded earlier this year. For the latest on how the university is responding to the coronavirus pandemic, please visit erau.edu slash coronavirus. Here's the show. This is the Talent Talks podcast from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. I'm Alan Caesar. My guests today are Mike and Joyce Pepin. The husband and wife duo are owners of Pepin Realty based in Ormond Beach, Florida. They're also leaders of our Daytona Beach Alumni Network, coordinating events and activities for alumni, students, faculty, and staff in the area. Joyce graduated from Embry-Riddle in 1981 and Mike in 1986, both with master's degrees in business administration. Mike and Joyce, thanks for joining us today. Nice to be Glad here. Glad to be here. All right. So you guys uh, graduated four years apart. So my first question is, did you actually know each other while you were students here? Yes, that's an interesting story. Uh, I was halfway done my MBA where we lived before we relocated to the Daytona Beach area. So um, the company I worked for, GE, wanted me to obviously finish it. And with Embry-Riddle being across the street from where I worked, it was the most convenient place to to go to school. And um, we were newlyweds. We'd only been married less than a year. And um, I was coming to school, working full time and coming to school a two or three days a week, and I suggested if we wanted to spend any time together, maybe he should consider going to graduate school also. So. Here we are. <laughs> so you both chose uh, Every Root a lot of uh, sort of location and convenience. It really was a lot of fun back then. Uh, two, usually two classes a semester we took. Sunday afternoons we always were studying. That was part of it. She was studying. If I was going to be with her, might as well study too. Yeah. And uh, so one of the benefits of coming to Ember Riddle is that uh, GE sort of helped you out with it. Yes, they paid for our classes. As long as we got A's, they reimbursed us 100%. Were there a lot of, lot of uh, people working at GE who also came here? Yes. Uh, everyone who was getting their MBAs was coming to school at Embry Riddle. So there's a large group of GE people who are graduates of Embry Riddle. Okay. And that was GE Aerospace back then, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so why did both of you uh, independently choose an MBA specifically? Well, we both were in business. I was working in the uh, program office as a program controller. Mike was in the uh, contracts, contract, contracts administrator. Contracts. So an MBA is the obvious uh, continuing education that we'd want to do to become you know, more educated potential leaders at GE. Okay. So you guys continued to work at GE for a while after graduation? Yes. I worked I worked at GE until they left town and chose to not move inland. I mean, Florida has so many miles of coastal area that mm-hmm. I did not want to move inland. Uh, Mike, talk about how long did you stay with GE? 83 I left. Oh, you, know? you were gone from GE when you graduated? Yeah. Jeez, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, yes. So you were working at uh, ADT Security Systems in marketing uh, around 1990? I did. I was in marketing with GE, and then I went into marketing with ADT, which was more of a marketing and sales and commission and company car, and then moved on to uh, real estate, which is, of course, pure commission. Yeah. Well, so you guys uh, moved into real estate around 1990. What what drove that decision? Back then, you know, of course, having a young family at that time, we did a little extra investing. We bought a house now and then and flipped them. And frankly, it was Joyce that came up to me and said, some of these agents aren't nearly the salesmen you are, Mike. So you ought to consider that as a career. And uh, so I did. And it's worked out wonderfully. So I... Uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, you know having young kids at the time and a very different sort of stage of life. Uh, were you worried about switching from a corporate job to something as potentially volatile as sales? That uh, you know how and what effect that might have on you know spending time with your family? Yes. <laughs> uh, but but first, Mike went into real estate. I stayed with GE. Okay. So his whole thing was it didn't matter what his business was doing because I always covered everything with my GE income. It wasn't until GE pulled out of town. Um, I did consult for about 10 years, so it wasn't until 2003 or four that I was having my midlife crisis, and I said, I'm done with numbers. <laughs> I need to be with people. So I, I said, Let's, let me come work with you. 
and so we've been working together since 2003 or four, whenever that was. We didn't open our bro- brokerage until 2008. Okay, so you, uh, so what's the difference between a, a realtor and a broker? The broker um, runs the business, and you get to keep all the money. Okay. A realtor has to share their money with their broker. Mike shares his money with me. So Joyce is the broker, and I work for her. Aha. Uh-huh. Which right. is the way I liked it, because I like sales, and I did not want to do administrative work. I wanted to just sell. And I had a nice, very profitable system of selling quite a few homes each year and uh, worked for her. She runs the administration, or assistant, and everything else. She also sells. So. Okay. Yeah, Mike and I have totally different skills. He's very, I mean, he's our producer. We get 90% of our business because of the work he does. And um, I'm, I'm, even though I had my midlife crisis and I wanted to leave numbers, I'm still very detailed. And I like to do things the right way and keep track of everything. And salespeople are out there. They're doing their thing. Don't tell me what's, what I can't do. Just let me do my thing. Mm-hmm. And we're at home thinking like, okay, how can I cover for that? <laughs> So I always tell people in our business, I just do whatever Mike does not want to do. <laughs> sounds great. That sounds like a good balance <laughs> then. Yeah. Uh, how did you get into, uh, you know, into finance and having, you know, uh, putting things in order? Well, I graduated uh, from undergraduate school um, with a degree in accounting. Okay. And I was just blessed to get offered a job by GE on their career development program. And they allowed, they gave me uh, two years of assignments in different areas in the business. And back, I was working for GE in Burlington, Vermont, and we were the armament systems department. We built Gatling guns. So uh, I had assignments in finance, manufacturing, programs, purchasing. And I was so happy that I was on this program because I found out accounting was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> because, it, you know, being a, in the program office, I got to work with everyone. I mean, I developed schedules. I worked with the engineers. I worked with the manufacturing people. I worked with the finance people. Make sure everyone was on schedule and under budget. And I got to work with a wide variety of different personalities. It was like heaven for me. You know, we ought to talk about when we were in GE, we were with Armament Systems. We were building Gatling guns, but I was doing the F-18 project. I was on the AH-1S helicopter, um, which was aviation-oriented, obviously. And you were, what programs were you I on? I was on so many. I, it's so long. GAU-8, weren't you on <laughs> yes, GAU-8 program? 30 I, millimeter, yeah. Yeah, we just built the gun systems. I mean, the, <laughs> you know... Yeah, but we interfaced with uh, aerospace. I mean, Bell Helicopter was one of my customers. Oh, yeah. And yeah. yeah. U.S. Army. We went to all of the yeah. facilities. <laughs> so, uh, Mike, how did you get into sales and marketing? Is that something you knew you were going to do, like when you were a little kid? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was nine, I lied and said I was 12 and got a paper route. And it was the smallest route in Vermont, and I grew it into the largest route in Vermont. Vermont. Um, I just am very competitive and liked doing extra things. So marketing just made sense to me. Um, you know, being competitive, you don't just win the game on Saturday. You have to practice. You have to do everything right every day and be disciplined. And so that's what works in sales as well. So being a professional salesperson has uh, just been a terrific career for me. So when um, it- when the housing market uh, kind of went upside down in around 2008, did you guys see it coming and were you prepared? Oh, we definitely saw it coming. We thought it was crazy what was going on out yeah. there. Appraisers were appraising anything for whatever price someone wanted to buy. Mike and I kept saying, this is insane. And, uh, of course, we saw it crash uh, on the West Coast before it came here, but it's obvious whatever happens there takes a while to get here, and it was. But, mm-hmm. yeah, we weren't really prepared for it because we didn't know it would go from, like, full out to dead nothing and then people left town nobody could there was nobody had it I was just it was really a sad time we did see it coming um for a couple of years it didn't affect us in our business I was thinking I was above it for some reason but then it hit us personally we also have had a lot of investment properties over the years Mm -hmm. and we had just a lot of trouble with those and uh and we ate peanut butter sandwiches a lot what, uh, yeah, what does it take to, to make it through? And then you've turned it around. You're at, uh, what, top 2% of the U.S. in terms of uh, retail sa- uh, 
realty sales? What? How? Tell me about that metric and tell me how you got to that point after 2008. Yeah, I'm a residential specialist. That's okay. all I do. I have a system just for doing residential prospecting and listing and selling and uh, so just sell at a very high level. I have over my career. Um, I don't know to. Uh, what, where were we, what was the question? Where were we going? <laughs> <laughs> how did we make it through the time? Oh, how did we make it? Oh, yeah. Worked harder, actually. You would think, well, there's no business around. Well, I worked even harder, uh, more hours. It was harder work. It was like pushing the, the, you know, the, the rock uphill all the time. It's fun to sell when you do something and you sell and, you, you know, we have happy customers. But this was unhappy times. Everybody was sad. They were losing their homes. It was real tough, and we weren't making any money. No. <laughs> but we, uh, like you said, we did keep working, and we had enough business to keep us from not going out of business. Mm -hmm. But it was sad because the banks, you know, who I blame for most, most of this happening, weren't cooperating with anyone. And, um, you know, we saw ways that we could make this sis the situation better, but the banks wouldn't talk to people. They did stupid things and um, you know we worked with people to try to encourage them we did become a short sale and foreclosure specialist I did that and then I could help people navigate the very complicated system that they had mm -hmm. created to allow people to get out of the situation they were in but it was very very time consuming and um, you know we f it felt good when we could help someone you know get a big weight off their shoulders by you know, selling their house or helping them to their next next situation. I noticed you guys are very involved in the community. You're uh, you know members of the Rotary, Rotary Club. You worked with a prison ministry. You volunteer. Your mentor at the local schools. Um, how? Why is it that you decided to get involved in the community like that? We've always been involved. Uh, you know, when my kids were in school, I was always a homeroom mother, and I did that specifically because I worked full time. And most homeroom mothers were mothers who didn't work, and they would call me like at seven o'clock at night and say, "Can you bring cupcakes into school tomorrow?" It's like, well, actually, no. I have to be at work at seven o'clock tomorrow morning. But by being the homeroom mother, I could control when all the work was done, who was doing it, and get it scheduled ahead of time. And I just enjoy being with the kids all the time. And then, you know, there are also other organizations that I had a passion for helping. So we just got involved. We've, our kids always saw us volunteering. They're both the same as adults. It's just, and when it sounds cliche, but it feels getter, better to give than to receive. It's true. It feels good to help others. That's really great. Yeah. We've got really full lives. It's, I don't, it's just the way we like it. <laughs> uh, does this, you know, does having sort of your finger on the pulse of the community help you in terms of uh, doing real estate? Yeah, it does. Uh, and networking, you can't be a fake out there. You know, if, if I'm not into gardening, if I were to join the garden club because I want leads out of that, they'd see I was a phony. But mm -hmm. gosh, we used, to, we, were, we used to head up the ski club too. Every time I'd lead a ski trip, I'd make a sale from the ski trip which paid for my trip and not that we were promoting ourselves no, at all yeah. they were just getting to know us as people yeah. and knowing that we're honest and ethical and helpful so we do what we want but through that you meet people and work with people and they see what kind of person you are and they gave us their business and we could we couldn't make it on that but it sure helped yeah. and it made it a lot of fun so uh, you focus strictly on residential real yeah. estate. Uh, what are the other options, and why do you choose to stick to residential? Well, it was my business plan not to be commercial and do rentals and do all kinds of things. I think agents who do that spread themselves too thin. I'm just a specialist on residential. I do hand off commercial leads, and I get paid back a referral sometimes, and then it comes back to me as a referral, but... I really like knowing what I'm doing. I mean, I've worked 40, 60 hours a week, and I still can't keep on top of it all. I don't know how I would do commercial leasing and sales and everything else. So, it's, Go ahead. And I was just going to say, if you're going to do something, do it right. Yeah. And if you've got too much to do, you're giving a little bit to everything and not everything to all. Yeah. 
has uh, has some of these uh, new companies, Airbnb, Verbo, uh, have they affected uh, the realty sales uh, model and has that maybe affected your business? Well, there's been a good thing with that. I mean, if you go, let's just take Ormond by the Sea, for example. Technically, VRBO, Airbnb is not allowed on most streets. But some people bought without realizing that they couldn't rent weekly or what by the night or whatever but they bought these homes that needed a lot of money invested to make them look good they fixed them up if you go up and down the streets the nicest looking houses a lot of times are ones that people bought that they thought they could rent mm-hmm. and then they found out they couldn't so it's unfortunate i mean it's it's a balance but you really can't do airbnbs in the city of ormond beach at all and there's only a couple of streets in if, i think if you're along a1a you can in ormond by the sea but uh, I think for a while before people realized they couldn't do that, they were buying, hoping that they and it would be a, it would be a very lucrative business for me. I mean, we have rental up there. I'd love to sell to rent it off weekly because we'd make a lot more money, but can't do that. So we just rent it by the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you guys were on House Hunters, the TV series, a few years back. Joyce yes, was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Thanks to one of my customers um, from Embry Riddle. Yep, she was. Uh, she works at Embry Riddle, and uh, she called me one night. We had just gone under contract for their house, and she called me and said, "Hey, Joyce, we didn't think this was going to happen, but." You know, my husband applied to House Hunters to be on the show, and they just called us and said, you know, we've we've looked at your application, and we want to enter you you to consider you being on one of our shows. And she said, you know, of course, we can't do that unless you want to do that with us. And I, and I thought, well, that could be fun. Mike and I were leaving the next morning for a week in the Keys, and she says, well, we have to get a, um, a demo to the House Hunters people by Monday morning at 8 o'clock. So... <laughs> So Mike and I went to a marathon, I think it was, and we spent the whole day him videoing me showing this rental we we had. And um, so she had a suit top on and her bathing suit bottom, (laughs) and I just (laughs) kept it on the top while I did this subject interview. And I'm not that technologically advanced, but I had to put this. I I tried to do it all. It was just a three minute video, but it took me all day. But I finally did it in segments, and then when my son-in-law arrived, I had him help me piece it together and emailed it to them, and they called us and said, yep, you guys are in. So it was a lot of fun. Um, It was a lot of work, a lot of fun, and they told you that if you ever get somebody else, they'd love to have you again. Yeah, once you're approved, they said you can can call us and tell us you've got another customer, but I never think about that when I'm showing homes. (laughs) Excellent. It's a lot of work for no money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I hear l- that a lot about people yeah. who part- participate yeah. in TV shows. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you guys have lived in uh, in the Daytona Beach area for a uh, long time now. Um, what's it like seeing the changes that have happened in the area and at your alma mater in the last, you know? This is just amazing uh, what's happened here. As we, This, we're at the library. This was the old library. It's where it mm-hmm. sat, but, I mean, it was just a... We didn't have the internet back then. 5% of this, <laughs> and there really was tumbleweed here on the campus blowing around, and it was a lot of trailers, which were yeah. ugly, those double-wide the mm-hmm. red, yeah, trailers. Yeah, the registrar's the office was a tra- trailer back there on the flight line. Um, there's the four buildings. We called them the ABCD ABC buildings. ABC complex, and yeah. Um, the, uh, and then I even had class, there was a building that UCF owned that we used to have classes on, on Clyde Morris. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just a tiny little place, but... Hey, we were go- we were working full time. We just came here for classes, go to the library, and go home. So, how did you guys meet in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike and I uh, met when we lived in Burlington, Vermont, and uh, we were at a party that was for the Stowe Ski Patrol in the middle of the summer. They would get together. All the ski patrol people who worked there would have a party, and it was at a house on Lake Champlain, which is a huge lake. And uh, the man that Mike worked for uh, had a houseboat, and he was going to be bringing it up to the party for the weekend, and he asked Mike if he would help him bring the the houseboat up. I happened to be dating the guy who owned the house, so that's how we met at that party. And he wasn't paying attention to Joyce, and so I thought she was pretty cute, and I did. (laughs) And uh, 10 months later, we were married. Oh, wow, that's fast. It was love at first sight for both of us. Oh, that's fabulous. And that was 40 years ago. Yeah. 
So did your uh, competitive nature kick in? To, to I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to make the sale, you know? Yeah, there you go. Uh, so how did you guys get involved with the Embry-Riddle Alumni Office? I think, Mike, you did first. Somebody asked you, uh, was, it, was it when Michelle was here or before that? You know, I came back to Embry-Riddle after my business started and said, look, I'm an alumni, and you're always hiring people and bringing people in, and and I want them to, you know, get good homes and, you know, add to our community. And you do, too. And they do, too. And I said, I think this would be a good mix. And it was really with Dr. Johnson when he was president. Uh, of no, which you worked with them before he was president. Just before. Yeah. Okay. You were showing people how to. So we just slowly got more involved. And I got to tell you, it, just to jump ahead, it has been the greatest thing for our life. We've, we've had more social fun and we have more friends through Embry-Riddle and this community, and the community loves Embry-Riddle. Whoever is out there listening, whatever, how would you like to have a multi-million dollar company come in that is clean industry every single year? I mean, I remember when Dr. Johnson said our, his budget was $365 million a year. That's a big business, you know, and they're all great people. And over the years, we've gotten comments back from when somebody buys a house, we refer them to get a mortgage from a mortgage banker or broker. They've come back to us and said, where do you get these Embry-Riddle people? They're so professional and ethical and smart. We love them, you know. So it's been a great yeah. experience. And I always say I've never worked with an Embry-Riddle person that couldn't be my best friend. I mean, when you're working with someone and you're in the car for a couple of days showing houses, you know, you talk about a lot of stuff. You get to know people better. They're all top-notch people. It's just amazing. A lot of great people. So when you're uh, deciding like uh, whether or not to uh, host a particular type of event for the alumni network, what are some of the criteria that you kind of consider? Well, the first criteria is what would be most attractive to the most people. Mm -hmm. Like the biggest event we ever had was at the Speedway. We had a, a pretty large group. That was a really fun event. We like it to be fun. I'd like it to be family friendly also because if you're taking time off on your weekend, you've been gone all week, why not do something that the kids would also enjoy? So that's my first thought is what could be fun for everybody and what's convenient right in our community. Mm -hmm. Although we did have a good turnout when we went to San Sebastian up in St. Augustine. I wouldn't winery. want to go back Oh, there. the winery, yeah. That was fun. And uh, <laughs> we did Copper Bottom. That was fun. We're on a trend here. Alcohol's allowed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, and we're, we have one coming up that I'm really excited about. We're going to be doing a dinner cruise on the Halifax River at the end of the month. So uh, really looking forward to that. That's great. Yeah. Um, thinking about the events that you've put on, which one is probably your favorite or the most fun? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking you to pick favorites here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think the Speedway had just finished their, their new project that they spent those millions of dollars on, and it was, so, it was so amazing. And to see the expression of the people that came with us, that how much they were enjoying it, that really made your heart feel good that you figured something out that everybody would like. But to be honest, I, I like our Habitat for Humanity jobs. When we go ahead and help them build a house, those are all, always really good events. To, and it's not really a social thing, but... It's a feel-good thing, and you know we get to meet the people that are moving into that house. We get to meet other people who are getting credit for helping build houses so they can get a house, and there's a lot of really interesting people that you meet there. So tell me a bit more about the Habitat for Humanity event. Well, every what? November, the university has a uh, Eagles Give Back kind of month, and all of the networks all over the world try to find a project that alumni can get involved in to show that we give back to our communities. And uh, when that started, I don't know how many years ago it was, I had just finished uh, working on a Habitat house with my Rotary Club, and I mean, it was just amazing. So I had suggested it to our network, and everybody thought that was a great idea. So we've done that a few times with a lot of success. So do you guys uh, frame up walls and uh, stick down roofing tiles? or what? Whatever phase they're at, we do. I mean, there's, I mean, we never know what it's going to be because things don't always go to schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Habitat people will have a schedule of what's supposed to be going on which weekend. We don't really have a choice of what's going I mean, if we can do something inside, that would be good. But we've put roofs on. We've laid tile. Um, you know, we've done the sheetrock. We've uh, framed interior petitions. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Whatever they want us to do. 
All right. Well, so you, <clears throat> you guys uh, have been married for 40 some years. Uh, you have two kids, three grandkids, and a dog named Lucy. You're in business <laughs> together. Uh, it sounds like a, a hallmark kind of relationship. Like uh, I couldn't write something better for a, you know, a greeting card. Uh, do you have any advice for newlyweds out there or maybe for people who are feeling the seven year itch? What does it take to stay together <laughs> for this long? Uh, well, stay stay flexible. Uh, we we believe in God, and we stay humble. You know, I don't have to have my way all the time. And uh, for, I can't believe how many times we've we've disagreed on something one day, and then I'll go back to her and say, you know what, Joyce, I think I see your point. And she goes, oh, I, you know, I think I see your point on it. <laughs> but you know, if you get bullheaded and you start to argue, we never argue. Never. Well, not we disagree, but I mean. Never, uh, never. We agree to disagree sometimes too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, the most important thing is we both very are very we trust each other. There's no question about our you know our ability to trust each other. Yeah. It's, and you know it's it's a matter of character. That's important in a marriage. If you've got that, you'll succeed. There's a lot of peace in staying with the same person all your life. You know, you know each other. I don't want to break anybody else in. You know. And <laughs> Split the money and everything. There's yeah, a lot of work goes into starting a, a new lot. relationship. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. There's that old story of this woman who's uh, yelling at her husband, and he says, "Well, um, something about well, why why don't we just separate? Because you know you're so unhappy." She says, "No, I'm not done with you yet." <laughs> 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 so she's I'm still working on making you perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's excellent. All right, so we're going to continue to the net lightning round in just a moment. Uh, but first, I'd like to tell our listeners how you can attend uh, some of these great alumni events. We hold host get-togethers around the world for networking and socializing with fellow Eagles. Uh, it's not just in major metro areas like Chicago and Atlanta and Dallas-Fort Worth. We've had events in Wichita, Kansas, Savannah, Georgia, and internationally in London, Frankfurt, Dubai, and more. We also host events where the aerospace industry comes together. So if you're going to aviation expos like Oshkosh and Sun and Fun, or conferences like MRO Americas, Heli Expo, NBAA, AVU, AUVSI, or other alphabet soup conferences, odds are pretty good we'll have something for you. So best of all, most of these events are free to attend. You can visit alumni.ereu.edu to see our upcoming events. If you sign in and update your information, we'll send you an email whenever something's happening in your area. Now, Mike and Joyce, it's time for the lightning round. Are you ready? We're ready. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys could uh, own a home anywhere in the world, where would it be? And what would it be? Oh, man, I'm in paradise right here. Uh, Ormond Beach. At the beach. I love this place. But I'd like one in the mountains, too. Yeah. Yeah. We differ there. <laughs> <laughs> Which mountains in particular? Um, Colorado mountains or the New England mountains to do, you know, hiking and hunting and, and skiing. We're both big skiers. I mean, that's, we grew up in New England, so. Yeah. I like to visit the mountains but come home to my sunshine. <laughs> that's definitely a, a benefit. So maybe Vermont? No, no. No, you wouldn't go back to Burlington, Vermont? Probably uh, the Georgia mountains and North Carolina mountains because okay. they're close to home. We can drive back and forth in a day, and they have a lot to offer. Okay, so you don't feel a pull back to no. back up north. All right. It's too cold up there. Yeah, uh, I moved down here from Illinois, so okay. I know that yeah. feeling. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, if uh, if you could read only one book for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, I've read so many good books. The Bible. Um, I don't know. I like to Joyce read. Joyce reads a book I, a week, I, so I, I just <laughs> read a good one written by Mark Lane that was on Daytona Beach and all, and the state of Florida and all of the all of the symbols we have. It was quite humorous. Um, I've had so many favorites. I I don't know that I can choose one. All right. I'm reading one now about the uh, uh, other Einstein. It's very interesting. Albert Einstein's first wife. Ah. And uh, it's all historic. It, a lot of what I read is historical fiction. That's a lot great. of Florida history you seem to like, too. Yeah. I like to get in my little Hallmark moment place. <laughs> all right. So uh, who's your favorite cartoon character? Dennis the Menace. Tell me why. I what? read him every morning. I just, he kind of makes me chuckle. Oh, yeah. Oh, in the, the newspaper comic. In then, the yeah. newspaper, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mine would have to be something like Marmaduke because I just I love dogs so much and 
Yeah, the, the, he's a is he a Great Dane or is he a Mastiff? Great Dane. Ah, okay. I like the big red dog, but that's not a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so picture your ideal grilled cheese sandwich. Right. You've got it in front of you. You're about to take a bite. Tell me what's in it. You want Joyce, me to go for Joyce makes ma- some. Uh, my favorite is with uh, <laughs> grilled cheese, uh, tomatoes, and avocado. Oh. I haven't yeah. heard the avocado yet. That's mm. a good one. And garlic bread or garlic toast, or do you put garlic on the toast? She makes a fabulous tomato. I never sandwich. make the same one twice, but a lot of times I just I do sprinkle it with garlic. But lately I've been doing like the California one with the avocado and tomato. Sometimes I put pesto in there. That's fun. Uh, yeah. All right. Getting hungry, Alan? A little bit, a <laughs> little bit. Yeah, I didn't have much of a lunch today. <laughs> All right, so if you could live for a week as any person in history, who would it be? You should have given us these ahead of time so we could figure <laughs> this out. Any person. I sense that you're a planner. You like to... Oh, I am. Spontaneity is not me. <laughs> uh, I would either want to be Jesus or one of the apostles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those weren't good times, but... But they I, were interesting they times. They were very right? interesting, yeah. That's l- go ahead. How, for one day? Yeah, or a week. week. But mm. if you want to do a day, if you want to just cut it down to a day, that's fine, too. Brain is blank. I'd have to Google some people before I could come up with an answer. One day. I have so many people I have so much respect for, but they're not, they're not in my brain right now. <laughs> that's all right. Do you, do you want to search for a minute, or do you want to... No, nah, uh, move on. I'll take too right. much time. I'm pretty detailed and analytical. As <laughs> oh, well. okay. She <laughs> has to get it perfect. You know? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. My wife tends to be that way, too. Yeah. You know, we, we balance each other in similar exactly. ways. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's, uh, that's the last one of the lightning round. Um, so thanks very much, Mike and Joyce, for joining us for the Talent Talks podcast. Thank you. Thank it's nice you, to Alan. be here. You thanks for inviting job. us. All right. The Talent Talks podcast is a production of Wicked Radio and the Embry-Riddle Office of Alumni Engagement. We're coming at you from the Maury Hassani Student Union at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in sunny Daytona Beach, Florida. If you'd like to share your thoughts about our show or suggest a guest to us, we'd love to hear from you. Visit alumni.eru.edu slash podcast and click the feedback link. Thanks for downloading us. We'll see you next time.